I was originally born in Guatemala, Guatemala City. Then I moved to New Orleans and I had two little boys. And um, the best time of our life was during Christmas because we, um, we spent a lot of time, you know, preparing for the holidays and um, decorating trees. And I was very festive. I was Miss Santa. I came from a, a decent family. So after high school, I went to college. And during college, I began my road to, I guess you can say, the dark side to, you know, to a certain extent. I came here from Alabama because I was a newly infected person with HIV and I tried very hard to get treatment but I could not um, due to an extreme amount of prejudice in a variety of ways. Um, when I first got to San Francisco I was immediately exposed to the chicken pox and I didn't know what to do and I went to the nearest pharmacy and they directed me to Haight-Ashbury. There are two types of people in this world, the addict and the normie. When you use and use and use and drink and drink and drink, if you're an addict, you're going to take this turn towards darkness. If you're a normie, you're going to continue to do that and hold a job and go to bed and wake up and do the normal things. You know, an addict doesn't do that. I would stay locked up in the bathroom for days at a time. My drug of choice was uh, smoking crack cocaine and drinking alcohol. One day, my bathroom door came down and uh, they just had had enough of me being locked up. That's when I decided that I needed to leave and I got into my car and when I looked up my youngest had run behind me and into the street and fell to his knees you know and he clutched his heart and just said mom please don't leave us again you know it's enough is enough can you just just stay home I couldn't deal with it you know and I I knew I needed to leave I needed to go find where I could get high and for the next 10 years you know I spent the, my life on the streets for about 10 years I was using uh, crack cocaine when I was on the street I would sit on a stair step or a bus stop I would miss being able to go to my grandmother's house or being able to go to my mom's house. Even though I would walk around and I would be so uncomfortable in my addiction, I knew that there was something better and I just felt the potential of myself. My partner came out here. He lasted about three months here. He had an aneurysm and he died on a birthday in my arms. The start of my epic story with Haight-Ashbury, so not only were they there for physical treatment, they were there for emotional support as well. I was destitute. He was my partner and when he was gone I lost my best friend and um, a piece of myself all in one day with that. I learned how to steal and everything that goes with the life of a criminal. So eventually I, um, you know, after doing a lot of time, with the system being incarcerated and just living a life that no human being should ever endure, I uh, found Walden House. <laughs> so eventually I was arrested. Then I said, I am starting to get comfortable with doing time and this is not okay. So let me try the program. And that's where it all started with me going to Walden House. I lived with my brother. Unfortunately, he became um, addicted to meth and um, he got caught. He just got lucky and um, pled guilty with a bunch of other people so the judge could go home at three and um, was hooked up with a casual use program and it was through Walden House and he's a recent graduate. While I was with Haight-Ashbury, he, he's been with Walden House, and I would have to say that it has really brought us together back again as a family. So Haight-Ashbury Pre-Clinic, maybe it should be like Haight-Ashbury Family Clinic. And there was this huge sign outside that said, this is the first day of the rest of your life. That's where my life began. It was like, I want to learn, I want to learn, I, teach me. You know, I was like a sponge because I, I had no idea how to live. My kids were my life and I needed them back. And Walton House gave that to me. They gave that to me. 
So while I was in program, my dad was sick with cancer. I had the supportive structure around me. Every time I had to leave the house to visit my family, I had to bring somebody with me. When I went to the funeral, I brought somebody with me. And then when I came back into the facility, it was a safe environment. I wanted to be a staff member. <laughs> I wanted to work for Walton House. And so I, I went onto their website and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to apply to everything they have, I don't care. The one job that they called me on, it was a new position, and it was to be working in the warehouse as the donations coordinator, and I still work there. I was just recently promoted to manage Northern and Southern California's in-kind donations department, and I love my job. <laughs> I cry because I really do. It's great, you know, to, to have a life. They gave me my life on a silver platter, you know. They really did. They taught me how to live and how to be human again. When I was in recovery, I was surrounded by people that would say, you have potential. So after I completed Walden House, I started working on Treasure Island for tie-dye. I worked for about four years, but then I decided to go ahead and pursue a master's degree. So I enrolled at the University of San Francisco and right now I'm in graduate school for nonprofit administration graduate degree and I'm almost done. I'll be done in uh, December, which is great. Feels really good. <laughs> it's so awesome to have Christmas with my kids today. You know, last Christmas we spent it at my son's house and it was presents everywhere and trees and lights and, you know, kids everywhere, you know, because now I have grandkids and they have, you know, their, their little cousins and, but life is good. Life is awesome. <laughs> even at times when I didn't feel like I could do this for any person, it's not even myself, I was like, they've all just given so much that I can't, I can't stop either. They instill you with this spirit, this never-ending human spirit. It just, what happens to one of us happens to all of us, so don't quit, don't ever quit.